Hey everyone, welcome back to the next video. Now, today is a little bit different. Um, today is Anzac Day in Australia. If you don't know what that is, please, I don't have enough time, please go back and Google it and um, have a good look. And if you are Australian or New Zealand and you have uh, already gone to a dawn service like I did this morning, um, thank you for that. And we just want to say thank you to everyone that is serving either past or present. Now, the reason why I want to do this video is Chris Hassan, uh, who is now a good friend of mine, called me up a little while ago um, and said, hey Zach, we're going to Kokoda. And I asked him, who, who? And he listed off a fair few names and they were all real estate agents, except for Bill, who is a pastor uh, or a priest. I'm not too sure, Bill. I apologize if I got that wrong. Um, so Danny Hayes, Brett Hunter, Jason Maxwell, uh, Chris Hassan and Chris Hines. Now these five agents are highly respected in the real estate industry. Working in real estate myself, I wanted to be surrounded by these guys because I wanted to learn everything about real estate. That was the only reason why I went. Now that sounds selfish and I agree. It was very selfish. Now that I know what it's all about, a total different kind of idea about why I should have gone and, and the experience I had. Now, as I said, I only went to learn about real estate and learn off these guys. What I actually learned though was about life life experiences, mateship, and about the actual what happened in, in the wars. Not just in Kokoda, um, because Anzac Day is not just about Kokoda, it's about obviously every other war as well. So Chris has done a video, it's about six minutes long. I'm gonna play it now, um, and please watch this, and I'll see you afterwards. Here we are. We've still got a bit to go on this mountain. We're walking up. Here's my boy, Paulie, and uh, beautiful backdrop. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
is just everywhere you go uh, you feel just like you're in the middle of nowhere it's just so isolated but at the same time so uh, peacefully beautiful 1800 which is uh, the highest camp that you'll be at oh, it was cold last night but um, got through the night it's, um, it's now five o'clock and we start the day like this every day um, getting up uh, with the sound of would have been chopped in the background. <laughs> Alright, so guys, thank you. Thank you, Chris. Um, a fantastic video. Um, some really cool things that kind of happened on the trip, as you can see there. It's really hard to capture the whole trip in a GoPro. I think it was a GoPro 2, so it was about five years ago when this all happened. Um, but I just want to talk about my experience and, and the way it did change me as a person from that. As I mentioned to you, I started or I wanted to go to this just because I wanted to learn real estate. Now, Danny Hayes is just a crazy real estate agent mind. Um, even back then, he was doing some crazy marketing and you could see the future was going crazy, really good for him. Now, he's just this amazing guy with some outstandishly weird and crazy marketing things and he's just going, going on. So, but for me though, I didn't learn anything about real estate. Um, I learned a lot about life and I learned about um, respecting people, but also, kind of how to push myself personally through a lot of journeys. Now these guys are much older than me um, and they've done a lot more in their lives than what I have. So, you know, to, to, to listen to them and to hear their stories, I kind of sat back and went, okay, cool, my life isn't, you know, anywhere near as crazy as that these guys are or as hard as it's been for some. And then the actual stories of the actual Kokoda um, trekkers as well just puts your life in perspective of the fact that hey your life really ain't that bad um, I'm standing by my pool um, and this is all because of people that have actually fought for us and and protected the, uh, the Australian land um, so Kokoda is something that uh, was very 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 hard for me I have probably spoken about it before um, I've got very bad knees from a motorbike injury in Vietnam and for me, um, the Kokoda was very painful. I get electric, it's like electric shocks going in my kneecaps when I'm going normally downhill. Um, there was two times that it really ruined me. There was one day, and I can't remember what the area was called, but it was the highest point where it had a, just a flat open area. Now, 
they had helicopters coming in, coming out, coming in, coming out. I was about an hour, hour and a half behind everyone just because I was going so slow with my knees and I just felt like it was time to give up. I got up to this field and I couldn't talk to anyone, I couldn't imagine anything, nothing was happening in my brain. Um, I sat down and I looked at a bush, uh, I don't even remember actually looking into a bush but I was right, sit, sitting down writing, looking straight into a bush and um, was just trying to think about stuff. Now my mind was so exhausted, the same with my body, that I couldn't think of anything. Now I cried. Um, there's not many times in my life, if you know me, that I've cried. Um, there's probably, you'll probably count them on my hand. Um, but this was one of the times that it just ruined me. Um, and it was thinking back to what I'd just gone through and, and, you know, trying to push myself and I guess kind of feeling like an idiot that I was complaining for what these guys have gone through. Um, but this was one of the toughest things I'd ever done um, as well. Now, I was trying to think of things like my mum, who dropped me off at the airport, was a huge support crew for me. Uh, my nana, who is an amazing lady, um, who was also always supportive of everything I do. Uh, but then even just trying to be the, the, the stupid uh, person that I am and thinking about females or girls or past girlfriends or whatever kind of thing. And it just wasn't working. So that gives you a bit of an idea of how exhausting that is. But then having those choppers fly in, fly out, fly in, fly out. Um, it just plays with your head that you just got to give up. And I'm so glad that I didn't. But three days later, um, we we're going down this section of the of Kokoda track called the wall. Now, going upwards for my knee is okay. Going downwards is the part that hurts the most. Um, I had electric shocks going on and they were so painful that I actually fainted from the pain. Now, not the most manly thing to admit, but you know, this is what we're here for. Um, I kind of woke, came to, and there was all the porters and the the, um, the workers and stuff like that, and they were already building up a makeshift carrier for me to try and take me down the wall. Now the wall's steep; it goes up and then goes down. That's all it is. Um, so they couldn't really do it because it was too dangerous for them. So we get into camp about two two and a half hours later. It's dark. It's not you know it, it's not when the ideal kind of like um, scenario to get into camp. And the guys paid me out, which is fine. That's what we all do. Um, but again, I was, I was nearly going to give up. They nearly called the chopper to get me out. And again, I said no, and I waited until the next morning. Um, and I'm very lucky that I did because I felt so much better. I don't know what happened, but I cried again that night. I cried for pretty much the whole night. Um, and I woke up and I kept on going. I think we had two days left or something like that to go. Um, and I'm so, so, so glad that I was able to get to the end with everyone that started with it. Now there's a photo right here of the people we finished with and just looking back at this today, it brings a lot of memories. Now I was just at the dawn service again this morning. Um, now I'm normally in Melbourne for the dawn service or you know I try and make my own if I'm out hiking or something like that. Uh, but I was only at the local one. And I don't think it really matters because it was still very moving in just knowing what people have gone through. Um, I don't think I would have had the same emotions, though, if I had never walked Kokoda. So I'm going to put it out there. Um, make sure if you get an opportunity in your life to go and do Kokoda or Gallipoli or something like that where you get the history, but you also exhaust yourself, your body, your mind, and you get the same feelings of what the people had gone through or as close as possible to gone through. Um, I've always said that I will never do Kokoda again. That's my bullshit, I probably will do Kokoda again, uh, but I want to take some people that have never done it and just help them experience what it's all like. So guys, thank you. Um, I hope you have enjoyed this uh, quick little video. Um, I want to do a huge thank you to Chris. Uh, thank you so much for this video. Um, hopefully it's helped a little bit of people understand what Kokoda's like. I'll put Chris's details and links down below. So go over, give him some thanks, give him the credit for this video. Don't give me the credit, give him the likes. And Danny Hayes, if you don't know this crazy man yet, he's a YouTuber as well, um, goes by the name Million Dollar Bogan, and I'll put a link up for him as well. He is just a hilarious guy, says it as it is, no bullshit kind of guy. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if he does something like this as well for Anzac Day because he's just that kind of bloke. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in. As I said, it's a little bit different from the other videos we normally do. Um, we will be back. I'll put the Sydney video up fairly soon. But until then, catch you later on.